I want to read a verse tonight, and we're going to, it's not, I'm not going to be real preaching tonight. My, uh, I'm still having a little respiratory issues, a little bit. Uh, 1 Peter 4, 12. 1 Peter 4, 12. It's crazy times, of course, that we live in. A lot of our preaching has been centered around all the craziness of this pandemic. And uh, I spoke to someone uh, last night, and we talked about, like I've got a brother who just hid at, is hidden out, my brother Bill. He's uh, six or seven years older than I am and uh, his wife, and they're not going anywhere. And I heard of another couple today. The guy's got em- emphysema, and they're not, they're, they're hiding out. And, and I don't judge those people that want to do that. For one, one thing, if they're in the high-risk group, Every week that they're not around it and can't get it, the technology changes and the treatments change and so forth. So that may be smart. I don't know. Uh, I've I've had I'm I'm not good at somebody ordering me to wear a mask or what. I'm not just. I, but that's that's probably a, a personal problem I've had since I had my own seat at the principal's office in school. I remember in the eighth grade, Mr. Lukancic, and he was, a, he was one of my favorite teachers, but he came up, put his hand on my, on my shoulder or something. I said, get your paws off me. <laughs> he said, my paws at home. <laughs> he thought it was kind of funny, I guess. But I, I, I was a mess. How God used somebody like me then? Duh, go figure. Use me, he can use you. I know that much. I'm going to read 1 Peter 4, 12, and he says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Duh. We, 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 uh, where'd this come from? He said, you need to kind of keep your eyes open. Uh Brother Jack Grigsby, pastor over at Berean Baptist, where I went to Bible Institute there. Brother Grigsby had a saying that said, said, if everything's running smooth, just keep your eyes on the horizon because there will be a storm come up over the horizon eventually. So here Peter said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing had happened unto you. Now, in the book of Job, I'm going to be some in the book, book of Job tonight. You know what he went through. Uh, Job 14 and verse 1, it says, Man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. I've preached on that before. There's a, uh, a fella, he's dead now, named Don Bowman, that used to travel with, with our group, the boys from Indiana, from time to time. And he asked me one night... I, we were talking scripture, and we oft, often did. And he asked me about that and said, My daddy uh, always said that man born of woman is a few days in full of trouble. And said, I, he said it was in the Bible, but I didn't know if it was or not. And it is. I just read it to you in the book of Job, Job 14, 1. So expect some things to happen. And the, the key is you kind of need to be prepared. That makes sense? Uh, Proverbs 20. 7 and verse 1 it says thou knowest not what a day may bring forth you know when when Job made that statement he knew what he was talking about when he made that statement in just one day he had man he had lost everything everything in life that was important to him he lost with the exception of that which was most important to him and that was his faith and trust in the Lord Thou knowest not what the day may bring. Man, just, just overnight, things can change. You know, you don't know. I can have the, the big giant stroke like my niece Carla did the other night. She had an aneurysm. 50-something years old, just retired from teaching, looking forward to that next 25, maybe 30 years, retirement. Hadn't drawn her pension yet. Had an aneurysm and died. 
That can happen. And, you, and, and you've got trials. There's, there's different storms that's going to come across the horizon. What is the name of the, the big hurricane that's hitting right now? Delta? No, what is it? What is it? Alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Is it delta? It's uh, uh, the Greek alphabet. Delta. And uh, we're supposed to get some winds and some storms from that about Sunday. Maybe 30 mile an hour winds, the remnants of that storm. You don't know when the storm's coming. And uh, the storms that God will send your way, they can't spot it with an AWACS airplane or one of those... <coughs> Storm chasing radar planes. But uh, things can happen so quickly. I've gone to homes, I don't, I don't know how many times, once was too many times, and knocked on the door late at night to notify parents that their child had been killed. How do you do that? How do you, how, how, how do, how do, you do that and, and how do they... How do you handle that? Just, man, in a moment. It's crazy. I've had to do that too many times. You just need to be prepared. I've held the lifeless body of a teenage girl out there, Franklin Corner, a wreck one night. Two girls. Two girls got killed. Teenage girls missed that curve. I held her just lifeless body, light. I just picked her up, tried to set her somewhere where, the, as the squad got there, they could do try CPR on her. You you don't forget those nights, those memories, and it and it lets you know the the fleetingness of life. There's a girl that's been coming here to church. Thought she might be here tonight. Her mom on the way home the other night came up on the wreck in, on Chesterville Road. A young girl, 28 years old. Flipped the car, rolled seven times. Had two kids with her. One of them I may have had a broken arm, one of the kids. But her mama had to hold that dying girl in her arm just happened so quick. And I knew about it within an hour, I guess. Someone had called me and told me about it. And, and I, 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 I called this lady and she filled me in on, on who it was and what had happened. I looked up the girls on Facebook. And she was thanking God for this and for that. And God, God bless me. So pray she's with the Lord tonight. Uh, some of you, go, you know, you've gone to the doctor and all out of the blue. Well, you got cancer. That's, duh. Would you repeat? Would you repeat that? Rodney Dangerfield said one time, said, "Well, I went to the doctor. He said I got I got cancer and I got Alzheimer's." I said, "Well, at least I don't have cancer." That never got much of a. Few people smiled at that one. It's crazy. It can happen so quick. The big heart attack, man. I've been on. I've been on those runs as a first responder, man. That, it's tough. It's tough. My wife told one day she had lung cancer. Wow. First Thessalonians 5, 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. Wow. Remember, not too many years ago, a tornado came through Holton. People got killed in that tornado. That's awful. And you never know, you never know when, when that can happen in your family. And, and we see it around us, and we, we, we take it to heart, and we mourn for those families, but it's different when it hits home. And my mama used to say, it's a little different when it happens to General Blackbird. That was her talking about when it happened to you. 
My mom had some weird sayings. But for many of us here, preacher included, you better have your house in order. There's, a, there's an old bluegrass song. I don't think we've ever done it. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready, Lord, walking in Jerusalem just like John. I remember rehearsing that voice from India. We did that song. And we wouldn't say walking in Jerusalem. It would be Jerusalem. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. You got to be ready. I want to be ready. And, well, how do you get ready? You get ready by checking up first on your salvation. You better make sure that you're saved. And if you've if you got some that maybe you need to get them in. Maybe you got some folks that you've been putting off witnessing to. For whatever reason, you've thought about it and you wanted to do it. Maybe you didn't know quite sure how to do it. Maybe it would be a good time to take that step. Or call your preacher and say, yeah, you set it up for me and I'll go, I'll go witness to them. I don't care how big and tough and hardened they are. The, the, the tougher and meaner they are, that's the ones God specializes in. I have better luck with that crowd than I do the churchy crowd. I better move on here. <clears throat> but you better have your bags packed and be ready to go. Because you don't know when it's checkout time. Oh well. The Lord calls me home, I want to have, I want to be ready. Uh, not, I, I know I'm ready as far as salvation goes, but I'd, I'd like not to face the Lord and me being involved in a whole bunch of foolishness and a bunch of carnal stuff. Uh, Brother Phil, Jeremiah's dad, not too many years ago, he called me, he got pinned under a, a tree, cutting wood or cutting a tree down, and he thought he was going to die. And what's the verse that's over in Acts 4? He says, I refuse not to die. And Brother Phil said, that's where I was. I told God, I refuse not to die. God spared him. God spared him. Better be ready to go. You know, Job was prosperous. He was a religious fellow. I mean, don't think that it can't happen to you. That's what's part of the message tonight is, yeah, it can happen to you too. He is prosperous. He was a righteous man. Hmm. He had no idea what was about to happen to him. Uh, Job 1.1 1, 1, it says, There was a man of the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. He was, he was an exceptionally good guy. Didn't the Lord say there's none like him? If you've you seen him. And it still happened to him. Well, where does that leave me? I don't quite fit that description. <laughs> I'd like to, but I know a half a dozen preachers had COVID. We were, we're praying for Phil Skipper. A lot more spiritual than I am. Brother DeMichael, smart about the book, a, a big work. Better be ready. And you see, if Job was not immune uh, from a, this destruction that came upon him, surely you and I are not immune from suffering some tragic loss. Mm. Then, of course, when it happened, all Job's buddies thought that God was punishing him, you know. Sin. Yeah, you got a lot of sin. You got to, got to confess that sin. You got to do this, you know. Better watch what you think about people when they're going through a crisis. Because you're probably wrong. All his buddies were wrong. Miserable comforters, he called them. Or physicians of no value. Uh, sometimes somebody in church, they'll go through a battle and there will always be a few to jump to say, well, <laughs> I was expecting it. I've seen, I kind of thought the way they were, they were doing this and doing that. I, watch out for that judgmental stuff. You can be happy it wasn't you, but you need to pray for them. By the grace of God, go I. When something happens to somebody, 
man, I'm not, I'm, I said, by, by God's grace, it wasn't me. Because it could have been. Might be tonight. God told the devil, but you've got to watch for that. So God told the devil that Job was an honest man and he, uh, a righteous man, that he feared evil, or feared God and eschewed evil. Get that right. You can be living the best life Christian walk that you know to do and still have a fiery trial that comes along. It's, it's just how it is. Uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, great preacher, they said, uh, I, I read a uh, biography of him and they said that he just went through great bouts of depression. Always so burdened down with this and that. And he is a wow, tremendous preacher. And they said above his, said he'd go through great bouts of depression. Above his wall, he had this verse, Isaiah 48, 10. was on a plaque above his wall. It said, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Our text, Peter said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. You need to always kind of be expecting that something can happen. Be prayed up. Be confessed up. And pray for those who need prayer and that ask you for prayer. Hey, God was not mad at Job. He wasn't upset with Job. God was showing off his righteous servant Job to the devil. Job would later say, he knoweth the way that I take, and, and, and when, I, when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Wow. I, I'm not to the place where I can say that. I don't want to go through that kind of trial. Because I don't know what I'd come forth as. Maybe ten. The only way that I've survived this long is God putting a hedge about me. <coughs> like he had around Job when this happened. It says in Job 1.8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Have you notice that guy? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered and said, Lord, doth it Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. You should learn from that passage of scripture that you need to be praying to God to put a hedge about your house. I pray for my preachers here every night. I pray for Jeremiah and Allison. I bring up those kids' names to the Lord. Put a hedge about them. You need to do that for your family. God, The Bible says, The angel of the Lord encampeth about the righteous. Remember that verse? Isn't that incredible? God's got to look after them because there's a lot of craziness out there that can... Nail them. Be sober. Be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. My. Where am I? Job, Job didn't even know that God had put a hedge about him. Man, I wonder what will be revealed to us when we get up in glory. You, you, you'll find that day you had that flat tire that God kept you from a fatal accident. And you're there disgusted and complaining over your circumstances. <laughs> I went through, I, I've told this story before. <coughs> Dr. Paul Heaton, great preacher, Paul Heaton. He's a, a, a Bible believer. Dr. Heaton has written several books. Has a Bible-believing church in Lupton. Michigan, a Bible believer, Baptist church, I believe it is, has a radio station, a big work. Uh, I went up and preached for him 
several years ago, and I got a buddy pass from a friend of mine. His son worked for the airline. I got a buddy pass so I, so I could fly there, and I had enough money to, to rent a car, flew into, I think it was Saginaw, Michigan, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I went out, I preached, and I got back to the airport, and my buddy passed, and the buddy passed back home was from a different airport than the one I was at. You can't do that. You, you flew me here, you got to fly me home. No, we don't. You can't, you're not flying with us today, not from here. And you didn't pay anything for it anyway. So I had enough money to pay a cab to get me to the bus station and to get a bus ticket home. I didn't have a lot of money. Got on a Greyhound bus, and a lot of people got on at Detroit. I had to go from where we were, Saginaw, down to Detroit. And I'm still upset at the airlines, all their fault. Little, they set me in a seat, and right next to me stood a little black lady about five foot tall. Five foot. And I had a Franklin Bible. So you know how long ago that's been, a little electronic Bible. And I, opened, I started typing on that, reading Scripture. And she said, what's that? I said, oh, I told her, what well, it's an electronic Bible. It's the Bible. And, and you. And I said, are you a Christian? She said, no, but I'd like to be. See what, what God had brought into my life and why he brought that into my life and I'm complaining about it. That, that little gal got saved, prayed, and asked the Lord to save her before we got halfway down the road. You don't know what God's doing. Job sure didn't know what God was doing. It hasn't been my goodness that's kept me going. It's been God's hedge about me and God's mercy and grace upon me. My mama prayed for her family. Oh, I admire these ladies bring their kids to church for him. You know, oh, if you knew how important that was. One day you'll know. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Man is born of woman. There's is few days and full of trouble. Why? Because we were, we're rascals. All of sin, the way the transgressor is hard. God finished his creation and said it was good. But the preacher says in Ecclesiastes 7.29, Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Job called his friends miserable comfor comforters. Uh, Paul, Apostle Paul, I like this verse. I uh, in 1 Timothy 6, 4, he talked about evil surmisings. Isn't that, isn't that a neat verse? When have you ever, you ever surmised by you seeing somebody do something, and, you, and you'll come up with what you think is going on there? That's called evil surmisings. Maybe not, may not be what's going on at all, but you surmised at what it was. That's what Job's friends did, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. They thought that God was upset with Job. But now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty with Job. When, when a fiery trial comes into your life, and that storm comes over the horizon, then it's how you deal with it. How are you going to deal with that fiery trial? Are you going to give it to God? Or are you going to go to God and say, God, show me what you're trying to show me here? God, I, I don't know what's going on, but I know that you're God, and I love you, and I'm thankful to my Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, and, and I don't understand what's happening, Lord, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you in it anyway. I'm going to trust you. And God, you will grow in that storm. The Lord said these things was at John 16, 33. 
1633, I think. These things have I spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. My, my, my. Job 1.20, it said, Then Job arose and ran his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worshipped. Wow. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this, it says, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I love that verse. I wrote a song around that verse. Uh, uh, For I must walk through the valley that my father walked before me. And, And the first line of that song was, I came into this world naked, cold, and crying. Someday I'll leave this world the same. Wow. So obviously the devil was disappointed in all this. Job didn't sin in all this. and He didn't charge God foolishly and the devil was disappointed. Chapter 2, uh, God told the devil, see I told you so. And the Lord said to Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? We've the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand. He let what happened to Job, the Lord allowed the devil to do to him because he was showing him off. You don't know why God's putting something in your life. You don't know. Job didn't know. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with it all, man, and it goes on and on. It's a bad deal for Job, man. He don't know what to do except he knows what he's going to do. He's going to, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Is what Job said. See, uh, it's not too tough to trust God as long as the blessings are coming around. Man, I got a nice car, I got a nice home, I got all this good stuff going on, man. Praise God, glory to God. Then when the storm hits, when the cancer comes, a little different. You know what Job Job said in verse 10 here in (coughs) chapter 2? And this is an interesting verse to consider. Job said, shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job kind of acquiesced to the Though his belief that God was in control. Whether it's good that comes along or whether it's not good, God's in control. <clears throat> shall we not receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? Yeah. Uh, we can get hung up in traffic and, and we want to complain to God about God allowing it to happen. Well, that jerk. If anybody had a reason to question God, it was Job, man. But it says, in all this did not Job sin with his lips. God said to Satan, I told you so. (laughs) Told you so. God is always light years ahead of the devil. Different league. Job said, though he slay me, Job 13, 15, yet will I trust him. I told the devil, I told you so. I, I know there have been, uh, I've been in spots where I've really let God down. I've been there. I've been in some of those spots, a lot of them. Job said in Job 3, 25, for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. Man, he went through it. Said in verse 26, in chapter 3, I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Where you, where, you need to prepare for this. You need to have your heart prepared to know that there's going to be days. Old rock and roll. Mama said there'd be days like this. There'll be days like this. Job said in Job 23, 10, When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
where we need to be. We need to be prepared. If, you, if, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. That gets you to heaven, trust in Jesus Christ. You need to have your, your heart prepared for the reality of a, that a storm might come. And that God's not going to leave you comfortless. God's going to be in the storm with you. You remember the story of the ship out there when the, the Lord's in the boat and the Lord's taking a nap and the big storm comes and the disciples, care us not that we perish. You know, the Lord was in the boat with him. He was in the same boat. The Lord's going to be with you when that storm comes. He's going to be looking for you to trust him and yield to him. And he'll send that comforter to get you through it. When Carla had her annual, it was the first thing I said, this is going to kill all of us. It's going to kill us, this family. We're moving on. Moving on for God's glory. She's saved. She's with the Lord. She's having a big time. But she's missed. I'm done. The altar's open tonight. Anybody got a burden on their heart? to give something to God those folks you've been meaning to witness to be a good time you know not what tomorrow may bring forth what the day may bring forth God loves you you're his children you're his church the Lord loved the church and gave himself for it your bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Said, shall he not freely give you all things? Just prepare yourself. Be prepared. When I, when I was a, a boy, I was in the Boy Scouts. The, the boy, anybody know what the Boy Scout motto was? Be prepared. Hey, I was, I was into it. I went to those camp jamborees and camperees and one little thing for doing this and that. A scout is helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. That's what it is. Two. One. How's the, then there's a motto. Morally straight, physically fit. I figured... Floyd Parks know all those Boy Scouts stuff. I was even a Cub Scout. No, no, no. Altar's open tonight. Are you prepared? Be prepared is what I use that illustration for. My brother wrote a song, Get Right With God, from that cross down there by Holton for years and years. A big sign said, Get Right With God. On to do. Are you prepared? I'm ready, Brother Jeremiah.